Hi, and welcome to this extra drama bonus episode of Sweet Valley Diaries, this time for book six, Dangerous Love. For this bonus episode, we're going to do something that I'm going to go ahead and call totally planned and on purpose. Lord knows there's plenty of drama to go around in Dangerous Love. Among other things, it ends with a huge, huge cliffhanger. So in order to smooth the transition from book six to book seven, I thought maybe you guys would like to hear the last few paragraphs of book six. That way you'll be all ready for next week's episode and you won't miss a beat. So without further ado, the very first installment of Sweet Valley Diaries Theater, starring your brave and very talented host, Marissa Flaxbart. Only the immediate family was permitted in Elizabeth's room, but that night, Todd managed to sneak in. He joined Jessica at Elizabeth's bedside. He tried to be encouraging, but the demands of the day were finally taking their toll on Jessica. I overheard the doctors say that the longer she stays like this, the worse her chances will be. Jessica's voice sounded dry as dust. She'll pull through. Todd took a chair and sat across the bed from Jessica. She's got to. Jessica shifted her haunted eyes away from Elizabeth to Todd. You still think it's your fault, don't you? I shouldn't have taken her, especially without a helmet. I should have known there'd be some drunken jerk on the road on a Saturday night. If it hadn't been Crunch, it could easily have been someone else. When I first saw her lying on the road, I was ready to kill you, Jessica confessed. All I could think was that it was Rexy all over again. But as I sat there last night, I began to forget about that and see that I'm to blame, too. I think I knew I was going to leave her stranded at the club when I left, and I didn't care. Some sister I am. Jess, Todd said gently, Liz knew you weren't going to pick her up. She did? Your sister knows you very well, Jess. And if she wanted to, she could have found another way to get to the caravan. But she had this crazy urge to get on the bike. After everything she'd ever said about it, I was surprised, believe me. He sighed wistfully. It's funny. It was the kind of wild, spur-of-the-moment thing I would have expected from you, but not from her. You're right. It doesn't sound like something Liz would ordinarily do. But I'll tell you this, Todd. There are going to be some changes around here. The minute she wakes up, I'm going to start making up for all the rotten things I've done to her. Jess, Liz loves you very much. I'm sure she doesn't think you've done... I've done plenty, Jessica said, cutting him off. I've really taken advantage of my twin, pretending to be Liz when it served my purposes, making her take the rap when I got into too much trouble to handle it on my own. Remember that time she took the tour guide test for me? I was... Too irresponsible to show up for that test myself. But do you think I thanked her? I remember, Todd said. She looked and acted so much like you, she practically had me convinced. That's just the point, Todd. She's always doing things to please me, just because I'm her sister. I thought about nothing else all day. She's been a better sister than I've deserved. I don't know what I'll do if she doesn't make it. She's just got to come out of this coma. She's got to. That's why I came back just now, Todd told her. I'd like you to try something with me. Jessica looked at him questioningly through tear-filled eyes. I was talking to Mr. Collins, he continued. He told me that when he was around our age, he had a friend who was in a coma. It was from doing drugs. The kid was in the hospital for days, and Mr. Collins and another friend tried this thing to bring him back. It sounded silly when he explained it, and there's no guarantee it'll work, but I think it's worth trying. I don't care what it is. I'll try anything to get my sister back. Todd understood how deeply Jessica meant those words. He realized, perhaps more than anyone else, just how much of Jessica's spirit and soul were pinned to that bed. If Jessica lost Elizabeth... She wouldn't only lose a sister. She'd lose part of herself. Take her hand, he ordered. She did, very gently cupping it in hers. 
Now take mine. She extended her arm across the bed, and Todd grasped her cold, trembling fingers in his left hand. He gripped Elizabeth's fingers with his other hand. Squeeze, Todd said. Squeeze as hard as you can. She did as he asked. Now, think of her as before. Think of how beautiful she looked last night and repeat over and over, Wake up, Liz. Never before did Jessica wish as hard for something to come true. Believing in her heart that it was going to work, she did as Todd said and pleaded with her sister to wake up and join all the people who loved her and needed her. Yet Elizabeth remained unresponsive, her eyes closed to the world around her. Dear listener, is there any chance that a single soul out there in the world enjoyed listening to that little one-woman radio play as much as I enjoyed performing it? I think not. The hour is drawing late, and so I wish you a fond farewell. And tune in next Thursday for some just really, really crazy shit. Good night. (laughs) 